This is a special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. During the next oh, 20 minutes or so, we're going to spend some time with a guy we've interviewed a bunch of times over the years, primarily about breast cancer, but we're going to tie breast cancer right now with COVID-19. Uh, we're going to spend some time with Mark Pilon. He is the executive director of the Susan G. Komen Foundation, Los Angeles chapter. Mark, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mark. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing okay. You know. How are you handling, I, 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 before I ask that question, because I'm going to ask you how you're handling COVID-19. Yeah. I, recently, somebody said, hey, do you know anybody who's had been hospitalized? And I thought, yes. And it was you. Yeah. You and your wife were both hospitalized with COVID-19. We yes, we were in ICU together for, I was there for a little over a week. She wound up being there for four and a half weeks because while she was in ICU, Actually, it was the day she was coming home. She had a uh, bilateral stroke. She had a stroke on two sides of her brain. So uh, she wound up spending another three and a half weeks there. Oh, my. Yeah. And how's she doing? She's doing good. She's doing good. She's got some speech uh, things that she's working on. But uh, other than that, all of her motor skills are there and, uh, and, and everything else. And uh, she... You know, I, I, it was funny because my daughter had asked me, how are you going to understand mother? How are you going to know what she wants? And I said, honey, I've memorized 400 different looks over the last 40 <laughs> years. I said, I'm not going to have a problem. And you haven't. I haven't. No. You haven't. Not at uh, all. And, and I just have to mention that the rumor is that when you and your wife watch TV at night, you sit on the couch together and you hold hands. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's terrific. Forty, we still but, do. but you still do. Forty years, right? Yes. All right. Well, Forty you're, years. You're catching up to me. Yeah. <laughs> Forty-two. Well, okay. Uh, okay. All right. Let's talk about this. Uh, as we talk about this, less than twenty-four hours ago, Governor Newsom again locked us down, and. The the lockdown is, I think it's difficult. Uh, it, I'm a social guy. I like to go out to have lunch or dinner, drinks, a soda, coffee with people. And I have not seen a lot of my friends literally in months. No, I know. And I, it, it is tough. I, I, I lost a nephew back in April and I couldn't go back to his funeral because they were only allowed to have 10 people at the funeral. And we have a we have a massive Irish Catholic family, and 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 there would have been three hundred there if we had been allowed, but we couldn't, and it was really challenging. And I couldn't I couldn't give my brother a hug. I couldn't I couldn't console him in any way other than, I mean, they actually live streamed the funeral so we could all be there. Yeah, it's, it's I, I've heard tough. that they're doing that here in L.A. as well yeah. at, at 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 services, and churches closed down again yesterday. Yeah, and so we're we're locked down again. And even though you love your wife for forty years, after twenty four seven, for you know, it's it's difficult to me anyway. Yeah, to be with that same it's the same person, day in day out for weeks and days, and even months at a time, and not getting out. Yeah, it it is. I mean, I you know I'll, I I do the grocery shopping and I'll run to Home Depot and things like that. But our, our daughters and, and our kids stop over and see us. So uh, just, to, just to check in on us and, and stuff like that. And, and obviously, they're who I'd like to see most. But you just have to turn that viral thing into, uh, uh, I, I, I haven't depended just on Zoom meetings. Sometimes mm -hmm. I've just Zoomed to friends so that we could sit and BS and, and have a good time and, and chat and have a cup of coffee or something together. And, and keep that, that personal relationship alive and, and well, rather than just saying, you know, I can't see you right now, so I'm going, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna touch base. But uh, it, it is hard, it's very, very hard, because I'm the same way, Mark, you know me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going up and we're at a meeting and I'm hugging, you know, more than 50% of the people that are there because I care about them and I'm concerned about them and, and I've, I've worked with them for years. And it's hard to just create that boop, you know, and, and have that be an acceptable greeting. I know. A few times you do see somebody. It is, it is difficult. 
we've been doing um, uh, happy hours with friends and maybe enjoying an adult beverage. And, yeah. And you're just sitting around and it's almost, almost like being there, almost. I mean, we're yeah. doing this uh, in Zoom. And I think that's, I think that's, uh, that's fine. I think we require that as humans. I'm sorry? I said, I think we require that as social humans. Yeah. Well, we're pack animals. Yeah. Right? We, yeah. we, we run around in groups. And, you know, in high school, you were either in the, the group, the, the athletic group, or the musical group, or the nerd group, or the no group. But... Um, and we'll let you decide where you think I was. I was the, the greasers or the preppies. <laughs> yes, they, exactly. Uh, it, it, when a woman has breast cancer, yes, and and we've talked to to some of the men who have had breast breast cancer too. Their immune system, even years later, is compromised, and they they have to take precautions uh, against COVID. Oh, sure. Cancer, right. Yeah. Tell Most us definitely. about that. Well, they, you know, they, they, there's a there's a heightened sense of their need to to really stay sequestered from other uh, from other folks, and even even some of their family because their family has more of a social life, or they're working out there in a, a retail or some kind of a public uh, domain. Um, you know, they've got to be really careful with even seeing their own family. That when their kids or their grandkids come over, they're sitting there with masks on, sitting on the opposite end of the living room. You can't get a hug and a grandpa and, and run over and, and, and jump into my arms or into their arms. And it's, it's, it's really difficult for them because they've had, to, they've had to take it a step further than all the rest of us, all cancer patients, not just breast cancer patients, but they've got to take it a step further and, and, and really make certain because it's, it could be an absolute death sentence for them if virus. I, I know how hard it was when my wife and I went through it. And it was incredibly difficult. We were both in ICU. Um, afterward, when the kids came over, you know, they were, they were all, one, one sitting way over here, one's at the fireplace, one sitting at the breakfast table. And no, no and, hug. No, 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 no hug, no anything. And that's so challenging. That's so challenging. Put that on steroids times a hundred for a, a, a cancer patient, a breast cancer patient, or just a cancer patient who's, you know, chemo has destroyed some other things or given them other underlying conditions that they're having to deal with above and beyond just their cancer. Their 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 immune systems are compromised, all kinds of their lipedema and things like that that they're dealing with. There's all kinds of stuff, and they just cannot, they just cannot have the exposure. What are the what are some of the things that cancer patients, as you said, in general, and we're you know specifically breast cancer patients, maybe those who have had breast cancer and it's metastasized, that is spread to other parts of the body. What should they do? I mean, you just mentioned one; they got to stay away from other people. Well, yeah, they've they've got to they've got to stay away. They've got to continue to eat healthy follow all the other guidelines with the social distancing and the masks. And, you know, a lot of patients even have incoming health care into their homes. They've got to practice those same rules and regulations with health care givers that are there to take care of them. The health care people are, are completely garbed up with shields and, and everything else, but they just have to, they have to be so cautious about, uh, you know, even is the guy that drops off your water. You got to wipe off the bottles and everything first before you bring them in. You don't know if he did that all with gloves on or the guy that handled it before him did it with gloves on. So there's all these, I, I think you have to, they have to take it just so many more steps further than, than John Q. Public does in the precautionary measures that they take to protect themselves or their family has to do it for them. Yeah, it, and, it, and some, some of these people that we've talked to, that I've talked to personally, don't have other family members, you know. No, I, I know I'm Tina's, I'm my wife's caregiver. And, uh, you know, we're, we're always taking the special precautions. The, even when the kids come into the house and it, it feels kind of icky to do this afterwards, but we're sanitizing the, the, the counters in the kitchen. 
wiping off the, the faucets and everything else because they came in and washed their hands, but they grabbed that before they washed their hands. And so there's all those things that in, in, the, in the restroom, the, 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 the handles on the sink and the, uh, the handle on the toilet. You just have to be cautious with that stuff because both of our immune systems, she has COPD. I wound up with double pneumonia while I was in the hospital and my lungs are more compromised now. Every time you, that happens to you, you become more and more compromised. Um, I'm not my svelte self that I was 30 years ago. So I'm carrying an extra 20 years or so with me. And those are all underlying conditions that can, that can lead to uh, more problems when, when or if you do get, uh, you get diagnosed. The, uh, you were working with other uh, affiliates here in California uh, yes. uh, to, to help with uh, a, a response. I guess it's a response fund. Can you explain yes, that? California response fund, yeah. Right. Explain what that is for us. Well, when, we, when, when this, you know, we all started closing our offices and things, we realized that we needed to go above and beyond and we needed to do some more things to try to help with that, that, that uh, intervening so that women or, or symptomatic men didn't have to go out as much, didn't have to be exposed, didn't have to take public transportation and possibly put themselves in a compromised situation. So we really came up with a, a plan and all six of us got together, shook hands and said, let's do this as a, as a team we put this uh, response together to handle transportation. We're doing lift rides for individuals. So it's really minimizing their exposure to their doctor's appointments and back home again. I can't take them to the grocery store and everything else, but able to do whether it's for chemo or for just a, a, a checkup or for their diagnostic work, we're making sure that they get there, just one individual in the car and, and bringing her home uh, to, to, to her residence. And then we're working with uh, Project Angel Food on making sure that they have prepared meals. We're offering emotional support and counseling via virtual uh, chats and things like that, um, helping them order their groceries, do child and elder care, um, getting their prescriptions. Uh, there are some that uh, on top of the, the COVID-19, but all the, all the unemployment that it's created to be helping with housing or deductibles for insurance and those kinds of things. So we're trying to do the real things that are, uh, we've always done things that were meaningful, but we did a lot of education. We did a lot of, we're still doing the research. We're not backing down on that, but we've decided to make it much more personal and much more direct so that somebody can really feel the effects of what we're trying to do for them. And we can truly help them on an individual basis. Well, I know that, you know, grocery store shopping is a big thing. And I, I, I mean, it's, it's huge. Here where I live in Ventura County, even now, months later, it's still difficult to have either pickup or delivery. Now, some of the markets are doing it and some aren't. So uh, yesterday I wanted to order from uh, a, major, a major chain that is the closest market to me. And they don't ha didn't have anything on my list. Well, on our list because yeah. this was really created by my wife. But uh, so I had to go to another one. And they said, well, we don't, you can get it, but it'll be two days. Well, yeah, right. And then one market said, we'll be there in an hour. That's the one that got the business. Um, well, and we're trying to work with, it. yeah, you've got, you've got to, you don't, you don't, you don't plan on running out of butter. You don't plan on running out of bread, you know, and, and, and milk and some of the staples that you need. We're working with Lyft on trying to create a program to help with that as well, where Lyft will be our, they are the ones that we're working with with the transportation to and from the, the uh, medical appointments. And we're trying to, we're working with them on trying to develop a program to where they can also be our grocery procurer and, and help us working with another organization so that we're working on this in tandem to try to bring the, um, the, the groceries to them in a timely fashion and, and make certain that they get them and that all those precautions are taken care of. I know that I have been in the grocery store. Obviously, I've, I've had it already. I've got the antibodies, I've done all those things that, that we need to do when you got the antibodies. And I, you know, when I go to the store, 
I see those shoppers for the various companies that are in their, their, their uh, shirts that have the, the, the thing on them. They've got the list in their hand. They don't have on rubber gloves. No. They're picking up fruit. They don't necessarily have their mask on or it's not over their nose. And, you know, I, you don't know who's been in their car. So, you know, we're trying to do this so that we can, we can do a protective environment for cancer patients to make sure that all of these uh, protocols are really, really covered. And, and if we can work with one company to make that happen, it'll just create the safety at a little bit of a higher level than it is right now. Are you happy with the, the way it's going? Uh, maybe this is political and you can say I don't want to answer it and that's okay. But here in California, we're, you know, we're shut down. We're, we're, we're not shut down. We're partially shut down. You live in Orange County, uh, California, a lot of pretty beaches there. Um, this last weekend, uh, the, uh, the beaches throughout California were just stocked with people. And social distancing was not being enforced or or done. Um, no. So overall, are you happy, or do you think we should be more stringent? What do you think? I I I do think. I don't think that it's enforceable. I don't think we can tax the police departments and the sheriffs and everything to be the the COVID police. But what I do think, and I do wish, is that more people understood how serious this is. I mean, it really is, and you know, maybe because we've been through it personally, and we know how sick we were. When I I walked into, to, the room and told Tina, I can't do this. I can't take care of me anymore, and I can't, I can't take care of you because she was about four or five days behind me in diagnosis. I said I, and she called the ambulance for me. I couldn't even drive myself to the hospital. I said I can't, I can't do this. You don't know how sick you can get and you've seen these these naysayers it's a hoax it's all that it's not a hoax i i'm i don't politicize it but i really wish that a lot of the general public was much more willing to recognize the seriousness of it i don't care if you don't know somebody personally right you heard enough stories there's been enough on the news there's been enough reporting about folks that were adamant about not wearing a mask there was a it was on the news this morning about a gentleman that that passed and then he's in that, or, or the COVID parties, which That's, just I baffles me, baffles me beyond, beyond belief. And then that young man passed away this past week and said, I think I made a mistake. Yeah, yeah. he was like 30 years old? Yes. You know, so you're out, out there playing Russian roulette with something that you can't control. And I wish that people were, would, would see the seriousness of it. I don't think we're, we're going off the deep end and doing too much. I think we're trying to, you know, do I personally like it? No, the fact that they close churches again, I go every Sunday, I'll miss going to mass. But if that's what it takes to minimize the damage that this is doing out there in the public, and so that I don't give it to my, my, my or come back and bring it home and, and maybe my wife catches it again, or that one of my kids or my grandchildren, then, I, I will take whatever precautions I need to take to make certain that, that at least I know that I'm not one that's carrying this around. I'm really trying to be as cautious as possible. I don't understand the mentality. And I, I wish people understood better. And it's a tough time. But look what our relatives went through, our, our, our grandparents and our parents with two world wars and, and, and the Vietnam War. We're being asked to wear a mask. It ain't that big a deal from no. my point of view. It's yeah. just and, not. And it's, I have, I have several masks and one is, uh, two of them are, are washable. Some of them are disposable. And I keep, I keep the disposable ones in my car all the time. I in case I forget the, the other ones. The uh, one is actually, one is a, an N95. And the other one is an N95 equivalent. It's the same material. But what I find interesting is that the, the gyms were open for what, two weeks, maybe three weeks. Yeah. I wouldn't have gone into, into Gold's gym if my life depended on it. And, you know, talking about that extra 10 pounds or 12 pounds that we've all seemed to have put on, I really would like to get back on a treadmill and start working out again. Yeah. 
I don't want to do it at the cost of, of dying. No, I, I, I don't either. And, and we, are, we are of the age that we are, we're, 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 we're more susceptible. We have, we have a higher level of, of possibility, but it now is getting I'm, younger and younger and depressed. younger. Huh? And now I'm going to get depressed. But, <laughs> you know, I, I think that if you're... We, we both have this color in our hair. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, one of us has more of it than the <laughs> other one. I, that's because of the... One of us is older. Guess. Guess which mark is older. But I, I guess, and I just had a birthday. I really think that, you know, I want this over. I, I do. It, but at the same time, I don't want to get sick. I don't want my family to get sick or my friends. No. I don't want people to die from this. And having big gatherings like at a church, uh, a local synagogue asked me to come for services um, the last couple of weeks. And I really wanted to go. And they only had 10 or 12 people. But I just, I wanted to play it safe. And I said, I'll come back sometime. Well, I'm, I'm concerned about the schools and my grandkids. I'm concerned about my grandsons going back to school. They don't and, have to do that. I, they, I think they announced this morning they're not happening here in California. Yeah, well, uh, thank God. And then, and then we'll be penalized for that, I guess. Or at least there'll be an effort to do that. But, um, you know, I, I was concerned about it because I, I, I kept saying to them, how do you feel? And I've got one grandson that's a little bit more sensitive to, I don't want to say he's a germaphobe, but he's very, he's just very cerebral. He's very smart. And, and he said, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned. He said, grandpa, I don't know if they're going to have morning classes. So there's fewer of us. And then afternoon classes, or if we're doing one day or two days, and then somebody else is doing two days and the rest is online. But I'm concerned about them. Wow. And they're both the, healthy boys. I've got a granddaughter that works in retail. I'm concerned about her. Sure. You know, so it's, 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 uh, I don't think that they're going overboard with it. I think a lot of people don't understand the severity of the, of the, uh, of the, of the, the COVID and, and the virus. Virus. Well, Mark, thank you very much for spending some time with us and sharing your personal story too. Uh, well, thank you. People are interested uh, in, in Komen. They go to Komen, lacounty.org. That's yes, sir. Uh, Komen, lacounty.org. And, you know, you'll find out all the activities of, of Komen uh, LA, including information if you are a cancer survivor, breast cancer or not, as Mark had said, uh, that'll give you some tips on how to further distance yourself from COVID-19. Just all the precautionary measures you can possibly take. And, and we have this, this treatment assistance program that we do need help with. We're, getting a we're doing a tremendous, it is a response fund and we're getting a lot of requests and we're responding to everything. But like any other business right now, we're, we're feeling the pinch. We're feeling, sure. the, uh, we're feeling the, the tightness of people don't have the expendable dollar. But if you've got something to share, with us and you're concerned about these, these women and, and symptomatic men with breast cancer, please consider us. There's a donate page in the, on the website and uh, think about us. Think about them. Right. Think about, as you said, as everybody's saying, we're in this, we're all in this together. Exactly. We all have to pitch in and help. Mark Pylon, executive director of Coleman Los Angeles. And we appreciate that. Okay. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. Is a virtual. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> but the lab, we he, and by the way, Mark is a great hugger. <laughs> I've 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 experienced. I've experienced that. Yeah, I have it. I have. Uh, join us at latenighthealth.com. That's latenighthealth.com. I'm Mark Allen. We'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. Hold on, Mark. Alrighty. I had a 